Welcome back to the pregame show here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. We'll get you ready for Penn Trafford against Shaler in the opening kickoff. But first, we are now joined by the head coach of Penn Trafford, John Ruane. Coach, thank you for taking the time. I know that it was probably very disappointing to come up short against Peters Township last week. And it seemed like a lot of self-inflicted issues with seven turnovers. What has been the focus in terms of trying to clean that area up first and foremost? Well, we, we flicked the film on Saturday morning and we saw the root of some of those issues. And, you know, all of us are at fault, missing included. Um, we just have to play a lot cleaner. We have to, you know, we have to protect better. We have to make better decisions. We have to run better routes. We have to, you know, put ourselves in better situations, not to have to throw as much as we did. So, you know, all those things combined, that comes back to me, uh, getting us ready and, and you know, putting us in a better position. So, you know, it was an important film to watch and, and certainly make corrections. You know, we're confident we could have won that game. We thought our defense played really well, especially after the first quarter. Uh, they kind of really locked it down. And, uh, you know, it's disappointing to turn the ball over that many times. And just, and not only that, we had some really untimely penalties, uh, some drive killers where we had some momentum and then, you know, do something stupid and uh, push us back. And we never got to finish those drives. So, uh, there's a lot of stuff we have to clean up, but fortunately, it's you know it's mostly mental things and, and things we can clean up. Ethan Carr has been an incredible playmaker for your team over the years, and I know just looking at week one, he hit some really deep throws, some splash plays. But as you mentioned, with a lot of turnovers last week, maybe you're inclined to scale back some of the passing attempts. So how do you try to find that balance? Well, I think we just continue to take what's given to us. We're confident that Ethan can make every throw, and he's definitely proven that. Uh, our goal of ours has been to to get the secondary out of the box uh, by taking those shots down the field, and, and that's been effective for us. So I don't think we change much of what we do. You know, we're gonna gonna continue to try to get a little bit of a fifty fifty balance if if we can, passing and throwing. You know, stretch the field vertically and, and stretch the field horizontally too to make them play with some width, and then uh, you know, create some running lanes for our guys. But uh, yeah, we, we definitely have to do a better job running the ball. We did not do a great job against Peter Township for running the football, so that's that's going to be a point of emphasis, but it doesn't mean we're changing anything we're doing, really. Peters Township and Penn Trafford have developed somewhat of a rivalry, I would say, over the last couple of years when you meet back-to-back -back years in the playoffs. That certainly will go a long way towards building one. Seeing them for the third time in three years and coming up short once again, is there any frustration for you in particular, the players who maybe have been involved in those matchups? I mean, sure, it's frustrating. I, th I think we're two evenly matched teams, and, you know, the, the story of the last two years have been the turnovers. And, you know, we just can't do that. We, we You know, when you play good football teams, you got to take pride in, in holding on to the football. And Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. I mean, we're not going to dwell on it. We just need to push it back behind us now, and we're going to move on to Shaler and our conference games and, you know, focus on the task ahead. But, yeah, it's been a good rivalry, and, you know, two teams, I think we have mutual respect, and uh, the games have all been pretty close. And, you know, we got to get over the hump. I know most WPIAL football teams are in the same boat where they had the abbreviated offseason. As a coach, do you feel as though you've seen good development from your players, or is there still a lot of room for growth as opposed to where you normally would be at this time of year? Uh, I think a little bit of both. I'm really happy with our kids, the, the effort they put in on their own to, to be in shape and to be football ready. Um, I don't think we have a problem there. It's a lot of the stuff we didn't get to install. Like, we didn't have double sessions for the first time ever. So even in the short time we had, we had even less time, really, because uh, school started up and we just weren't able to do our typical summer camp schedule. So there's a lot of things we're still installing now, um, you know. And uh, those are things we took for granted, I guess, as coaches and, you know, tried to squeeze in as much as we possibly could and, you know, the, the more we practice, we're going to keep repping fundamentals and, and things of that nature. And, you know, hopefully by this week, next week, you know, we're, we're in midseason form because we have to be. Talking to head coach John Rowane here on the pregame show. Obviously, you highlighted the defensive effort against the Indians, which included a defensive score. But it was a strong effort on that side of the football against Greater Latrobe as well. Through two games, what has been the calling card for your defense? Just really good team defense. Our kids have always been good at um, running to the football. And, you know, if, if one guy misses a tackle, there's always seems to be another guy there to make the tackle. So, 
you know, our kids are, are put in really good position by our coaching staff on the defensive side of the ball, and uh, they respond. And, you know, we have some physical linebackers this year, guys that can run and are athletic. Uh, you know, Caldera has two interceptions in two weeks and has looked good doing it. He took one back for a touchdown against Peters. We have a veteran secondary. You know, all four guys back there have played a lot of football over the last couple of years. So just general running to the football and, and making plays when the opportunity is in front of them. They've done a great job at it. I don't know how much time you have on Sundays to watch the NFL, but this past week it was very concerning because there were some very significant injuries to notable players. It seemed about as bad as I ever remember in a single day of football with major injuries. And a lot of people speculated that's because you don't have quite the same amount of preparation with the preseason. Do you feel as though that's a concern at the high school level as well? I definitely do. We talked about this at uh, meetings and for years, we've talked about concussion protocol and cardiac arrest and heat acclimatization and you know all these things, and they all kind of took a backseat this year to COVID, uh, and rightfully so. But um, you know those things didn't magically disappear because of COVID. Um, but the the whole weight training thing, there's a reason you have to lift weights for for ten, eleven months a year uh, to prepare for football season. Your body has to get ready for the I don't want to say abuse, but the the physicality of the game, and you have to have strong you know, everywhere, uh, you know, your neck certainly has to be one of the strongest areas of your body when you're making tackles, and, you know, on you know, collisions. So, yeah, we, we certainly could have used more, just like every other school could have used more. And I'm sure that is potentially a, a cause for alarm. Um, you lost preseason scrimmages. You lost camp, like I said earlier. Your body has to get used to, you know, the, the physical bearing that it takes. Looking ahead to tonight's matchup against the Shaler area Titans. Second straight non-conference game. Obviously, I'm sure you're looking forward to finishing up with four straight in conference play, but how do you approach this one tonight? It's a big game for us. Like we, you know, we've talked about uh, it's a seven-game season for everybody, but especially our seniors. So we treat every game like a conference game, and you know they all have meaning to us. Um, it's just such a limited window that we get to play. So uh, we're going to go all in to, to win the game. We'll, we'll pull everything out of the, the bag and uh, and see what we got. But but we're certainly going to try to be aggressive and attack these guys. Uh, try to use some speed on the perimeter and, and um, you know, try to put some pressure on them and, and try to force them into some bad decisions. You have not gone against the Titans for a handful of years now, but what do you see when you look at that team on film? It's a big, strong team. Um, literally, I mean, they're, they're, they've got some big, boys on the defensive line um so certainly getting movement at the first level is going to be a big point of emphasis for us in the game you know they have some some guys that are young and a couple of veteran guys i know they graduated a ton of starters last year so they're kind of getting their feet wet still but they you know they have some linebackers that can drop into coverage and uh cover the pass very well their secondary runs well and then on the flip side they're they're kind of a power football team uh, but they'll certainly spread it out and throw the ball as well so uh, we'll be covering all angles on, the, on their offense. And lastly, Coach, it seems like it changes by the day, but spectators may be starting to increase in terms of the capacity at some of these high school football venues. What do you know as far as the Penn Trafford crowd tonight, and how much does that maybe help when you do get more fans back to cheer on the team? Well, we played our first game at home against uh, Latrobe, and it was eerie. It wasn't just didn't feel like a football game. It was crazy. Uh, you don't realize how badly you miss the student section and how badly you miss all the parents and fans and, and, and the band and just the whole the whole Friday night experience. So, uh, fortunately, our administration has done an awesome job. They're going to have uh, each each parents of the band cheer and football team and get two tickets. So. Hopefully they all take them up on that offer and show up at the game and you know make some noise and uh, just make it feel like a Friday night again. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time, and good luck heading into tonight's matchup. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's head coach John Ruane of the Penn Trafford Warriors. We'll take a break and continue our pregame show here on WSN. <laughs> 